So one of the most common questions I always get from patients and hygienists and dentists is, you know, products, home care products. What can we have our patients use that will actually help them? And what products can we recommend that they're actually going to use? You know, so can you talk to us a little bit about over-the-counter products, how they work, what they, what the structure is like, and how they actually provide impact in the body, and then maybe why there are better options out there. Okay, so over-the-counter products are gonna fall into a couple different categories and based on what I hear you saying. So there's a few that are, you're gonna find in, let's say this is dental office A, right? So you go into your, your provider, that looks maybe more like a church or something, but we'll say that's dental office A. And so let's take your son Keegan, he's awesome. And we have Keegan sitting in here and Keegan says, what are some things I can do at home that's going to help me to have teeth that hit what, what Wendy has told me to do as my master hygienist. She's told me my teeth got some problems. So what am I gonna do? So in their office, they may have some displays of things. These are considered over-the-counter products, right? They didn't write you a, a prescription for them. They're just, they're maybe on display on the countertop. Maybe the hygienist recommended some things to you, or she maybe gives you some recommendations and says, hey, go over to your store B and buy them from, you know, wherever. They're on aisle six of, of store B. So these are the two things we're talking about. So what does Keegan or find over here on aisle six on row three of this store? So we're, we're not talking about prescription level things. So if you take these products, buy in almost every account, they're gonna have certain similarities and they're gonna have certain deficits. Most of them are gonna fall under an area what's called palliative. And palliative meaning they're trying to serve a specific pain point. Did I even, I spelled that wrong. That's embarrassing. There you go, you got palliative. it. Palliative. Palliative is, is critical because when people are asking, they, they have something that's a bit of a concern. Whether that's decay, uh, for the most part, uh, it's going to fall under an area of pain. It's going to fall under bleeding. And they're trying to find something that's going to reduce this, right? And sometimes it's from an area of bad breath. They just want to oh, smell fresh, perfect. you know? Yeah. So they're, they're looking for an option that's going to try and give them one of these options. Usually it's not going to be combined into this area. And so if you take, for instance, let's say something for bad breath. Almost every one of the over-the-counter solutions or recommendations for bad breath is going to be something that's going to mask those molecular signals. So let's say this is a molecule that's kind of somehow, it looks more like a sun, I guess, but let's say there's a molecule that's embedded itself through the tongue and it's kind of releasing there. Most of these aren't destructive to this molecule. They're just masking it. They're kind of covering it up and giving you like that, uh, it's like a, a bathroom mister, you know, you go into the restroom and you just spray the thing around and think, okay, somehow it's gonna make, make everyone, better. Make, every, make everything better. It doesn't really reduce this. So in terms of masking solutions, not ideal, not something you're gonna look for. If their concern is bleeding, most everything that's out there is gonna have almost no effect on bleeding because of the fact that bleeding is secondary to the pathogens or the bugs that are present at a deeper level within the tissue. So there's not a whole lot out there that's going to do this from an over-the-counter solution. Pain or decay is something that's almost uh, somewhat tied together, but almost non-existent. Most of the over-the-counter the options are gonna contain derivatives of clove, so some form of eugenol that's gonna be in there, but other than that, there's just not a whole lot out there. So I think one of the beautiful things about what, we, what you've put together is the fact that the combination of these different essential oils and blends of compounds address each and every one of these. It's one of the first and only products I've ever seen that actually works on a, a, the, in a, the ability to decrease decay, the ability to decrease pain, decrease bleeding, give somebody better breath, all in one simple product. And the most important part is it's usable for any age. It doesn't matter if they're two or if they're 79. It works at the same type of a level. That's incredible. 
It's been really, really fun putting it together. But that, that's so interesting to, to hear you talk about over-the-counter products that way because here's why we got involved in this project is because we knew that the over-the-counter products don't work. We've seen that for how many years in dentistry? More than 20 years. Uh, patients frustrated, we're frustrated because the stuff that they're buying and paying good money for isn't providing the impact long-term that they're looking for. Mm. So that's super interesting. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome.